And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Stealing Mona Lisa, which has actually a pretty cool cover. Um, I, I, I like the... I, I don't know, I just like that picture of Mona Lisa. This game is about you being a bunch of art thieves stealing the Mona Lisa and other famous paintings. Let's take a look. In this game, players are trying to get different works of art, like the Mona Lisa, or the Birth of Venus, or a Sunday afternoon, and so on and so forth. You probably recognize these paintings. These paintings have a different values on them. Whoever has the highest values of painting at the end of the game is the winner. Now, each painting, if you're going to steal that painting, requires a certain number of heist cards. You can see this one requires those three symbols. There is a whole deck of these cards um, which have these different heist symbols on them and also have different values on them that go up from one to seven. At the beginning of each round you're going to put out a number of these cards, art cards, in the middle of the table that are equal to one less than the number of players. You're then going to deal each player five of these cards. Each player is going to take one, keep one, pass it to the next person and keep going until they've drafted five cards. They also can keep some cards from round to round, depending on the number of players. So if I don't use all these cards, perhaps I'll have a couple cards left over from a previous round. Then, players are going to letter all the cards that are out here. So, for example, we'll say Mona Lisa is A, and Birth of Venus is B, Sunday Afternoon is C, and At Dusk is D. Each player is going to secretly pick which painting that they're going for from letter cards in their hand. Each player is going to have a different color of cards. You're also going to play some skill cards to try to get that painting. And then once everyone's done that, you will flip these over. If you are the only person to go for a painting, that painting is yours. These cards are discarded. It doesn't matter if you have the right skills or not. Anything works if you're the only person. If multiple people go for a painting though, then you have to reveal your cards. If your cards don't match the symbols that are needed, well you're out. If they do, you compare them to anyone else's whose symbols matched, and whoever has the higher total value on their cards will get that painting. That's basically it. Players will, you know, the next round you'll put out more paintings, and you will continue to do this until there's only two paintings left. At that point, players will total up their paintings, and whoever has the most is the winner. I don't know why, but I just really like the backs of these cards. They look good. And I mentioned that for two reasons. One, I really like the backs of these cards, and two, I hate pretty much every other graphic design choice. I mean, let's take a look at this card, for example. So here we have a card which shows a painting, and that's actually one of my favorite paintings, and it's just a painting there with the name of the painting and then some symbols that really look like they're, you know, some clip art type stuff on them. Uh, you're already kind of cheesing out when you're using famous paintings for a game because they're public domain. And then to use this clip art on top of this, the whole game just looks very amateurish. And because of that, that, that's problematic. I mean, these cards themselves, I know this is not clip art, but neither is it really good artwork. So that's one problem. Um, also, again, if you're making a game, and I'm going to keep saying it, so you're making a game, I don't want the name of your game on the cards. I want what is the deck of cards called because I don't want people to have to remember the blue ones are what people are the gray ones are what people are stealing the blue ones are the ways you do it that you could just put paintings or whatever on these cards that's all a little semantical though the biggest problem is the game itself is really not that interesting it sounds interesting right i went to a spot no one else went to and i can use any cards i want bluffing ha 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 but because there's one less painting than everyone else the chance of you crossing someone else's path is pretty high. Now you can argue ahead of time and say, I'm going for this one or whatever, but it doesn't matter. And then here's the other thing. Sevens are better than ones. When are they better than ones? They're always better than ones. So when you get cards with high numbers, you draft them. 
the drafting is, do I take a card with a skill I need or do I take a card with a high number or do I take a card with a skill I need and a high number? Obvious. It just, to me, the decisions of this game were very obvious and many times we're passing around cards that don't match any of the paintings that are out there and you're like, all right, I'll just take high numbers because high numbers are always better. And then you just play a hand of cards. If you have one of the paintings, you might as well play it. There's no reason not to bluff. If you can win a painting, go for it. If not, Play a couple cards and bluff for the highest painting out there. What does it matter? If you lose, you don't get the painting. I mean, if, if someone else goes there, you don't get the painting. But if no, but if uh, if if you you didn't have the cards anyway, so very straightforward game. There's a lot of games where it's like, what is where I'm going here, you're going here. Simultaneous selection games. There's a lot of those. This is just a very below average one, so can't recommend it. Dice Tower Judgment. Nah. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.